next countdown, we have the sirens. So there is a creepy legend out there that sirens live in or around the Bermuda Triangle, and that they are to blame for all the disappearances of the sailors and ships and stuff. They attract sailors in with their beautiful voices and enchanting music. Next thing you know, they're sailing right into the rocks and to their death. In fact, it's said that they can even charm the winds, meaning they can make the water more turbulent for sailors or windier for pilots. So maybe there are sirens lurking in the Bermuda Triangle. Who knows? In our ninth spot today, we have pyrosomes. Now, these things are pretty interesting. I mean, just take a look at them and the shape of them. It looks like something pretty questionable. Anyways, these are free floating colonial tunicates. They usually live in the upper layers of the open ocean in warm sea, but they have been found deeper down as well. Now, what is a tuna kit, you ask? Because I certainly didn't know until today's video. Well, they are these small marine invertebrate animals. So a bunch of these cluster together and form this cone-shaped colony. The colonies can be up to 18 meters, which is 60 feet long. In that case, there would be hundreds of thousands of these dudes in there. Because individually, they are less than one centimeter. Other names that they go by are sea pickles, sea worms, sea squirts, fire bodies, and cockroaches of the sea. Moving on to number eight, we have the mermaids. Obviously sirens and mermaids are pretty similar, just like one harms you and the other don't wanna be discovered and hopefully don't harm you. It's believed that beneath the waters in the Bermuda Triangle are a number of mermaids swimming about. In fact, over the years, a number of sailors have claimed to see faces of humans underwater. Legend goes that these are the faces of sailors that got pushed overboard and drowned. But what if they're not ghostly sailors and they're actually mermaids? Not only that, but we still have so much more of the ocean to explore and map out. Who knows what really lurks down in the ocean? Maybe mermaids are real. In our seventh spot today, we have the Kraken. Now there are a number of people that believe that the legendary Kraken isn't so legendary. And maybe that's another reason as to why ships and airplanes go missing and that there's no wreckage ever found. It's because the Kraken swallows them whole, so there's no wreckage left over. For the planes, the Kraken is said to be big enough to snatch a plane right out of the sky. Might sound hard to believe, but people are working to prove this theory. And if they go missing, I bet they fell victim to the Kraken as well. In our sixth spot, we have the marine hatchet fish. Now these dudes are pretty creepy looking. Uh, they constantly have this expression plastered on their face as if they just seen a ghost. They got massive foggy grayish eyes and a gaping mouth. Like they look scary, but then they also look like they're scared. I don't know. Anyways, these dudes are tiny. They range from 2.8 centimeters to 12 centimeters depending on the species. It gets its name because its body is kind of shaped like a hatchet. They have the ability to look directly up with their eyes to see above them and grab prey floating down. Not only that, but their eyes have become sensitive to light, so they're really good at spotting prey. It can pick out camouflaged prey swimming in the murky light above with ease. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the anglerfish. Now, anglerfish are undeniably creepy. In fact, they are considered one of the scariest sea creatures on Earth. And I know why, just take a look at its terrifying mouth lined with spiky teeth. Now, if you've seen Finding Nemo, then you remember this guy with that little ball of light that dangles down from its head while it hides out in the darkness. And then when fish are drawn to it, like Marlin and Dory, he comes out of nowhere and just snatches them and eats them. But obviously, Finding Nemo is a Disney movie, so they didn't kill off the two main characters. So what else is creepy about this fish is that their mouth is so wide that it extends all over the entire circumference of its head. These creatures are also covered in what looks like hair all over their body, but these are actually used to sense what's around them. I don't know, they're just creepy, no thank you. Plus they can swallow fish that are almost twice their size. Moving on to number four, we have the lionfish. Now these fish are pretty beautiful. They're covered in bright colors and stripes, but they are full of venomous spines. Getting pierced by one is excruciating, but death is very, very rare, but it can still happen. They have 18 venomous spines that can pierce right through our skin. 
13 of those spines are located along the spine of the dorsal fins. There is one on each of the pelvic fins and three short spines on its backside by its booty. As for the size of these bad boys, well, an adult lionfish can grow as large as 18 inches, which is pretty big, whereas the young might only be like one inch or less. Moving on to number three, we have the blanket octopus, which is a pretty interesting name for an octopus, if you ask me. But it gets its name because the females have a long, like, fleshy cape thing that's around its tentacles. This cape makes the octopus appear larger and more intimidating to potential predators. But fun fact, the females can weigh up to 40,000 times more than their partners. As for size, although pitchers make them look big, they're kind of small. The females grow two meters in length. The males, on the other hand, are 2.4 centimeters. Yes, 2.4 centimeters. So they are tiny. They're like, bam, okay? Don't ask me how they mate. I have no clue. That size difference is insane. In fact, the blanket octopus or octopi have the largest gender size discrepancy in the animal kingdom. Coming in at number two, we have the fluke fish, aka the summer flounder. Now, this is one of the most oddly shaped fish I have ever seen. They're super flat, but have big round bodies lined with like fins. The weirdest part though, has to be its eyes. They have both eyes on the same side of their face instead of one on each side. So it like looks side profile all the time. It's pretty weird. Now they're also called chameleons of the sea because they can camouflage to the bottom of the ocean with ease. In fact, they can change their color and texture to match their surroundings. Isn't that cool? I think so. Now they can grow anywhere from 8.7 to 23.6 inches, which is 22 to 60 centimeters in length, with their average size being around 15 inches, which is 38 centimeters. And in our number one spot today, we have the giant isopods. Now these things are like giant underwater cockroaches. I kid you not. And they are found in the cold deep waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Ocean. However, although it looks like a bug, it is not. They are closely related to marine crustaceans like shrimp and crabs. As their name suggests, they are giant. They are typically between 7.5 to 14.2 inches in length, but can grow even bigger. One of the biggest ones discovered was 2.5 feet long. It was discovered in 2010. Scientists still are trying to figure out why they grow so big. They think maybe it's to help them survive the extreme pressure of the deep ocean. But who really knows? What is also creepy is that they're carnivores, okay? They feast on dead animals that fall from above and probably dead divers too. <laughs> Starting off this countdown, we have the cookie cutter shark. These sharks are called the cookie cutter shark due to the fact that they leave a cookie shaped bite hole in their prey, but they are pretty small compared to other sharks. They grow to about only 20 inches, but they are still highly aggressive. In fact, they have been known to attack whales, even great white sharks. These little guys also have the largest teeth out of any species of shark. In fact, their bites are so strong and sharp that they have managed to bite through submarines. I kid you not. Also, they have been known to bite through cables or deep sea equipment. So you definitely don't wanna get in the way of these guys. Coming in at number nine, we have the oarfish. The oarfish is the world's longest bony fish. They can be up to 56 feet in length and can weigh about 600 pounds. They also look pretty weird. They look like a cross between an eel and a fish. Not only that, but they have bright silvery skin with bright red spikes running down their back. In fact, it gave two men quite the scare once. Back in 1860, two men were gathering seaweed on the coast of Bermuda when this creature washed up on the rocks. They immediately thought it was a nasty sea serpent beast, so they killed it out of fear. Later, it was found out just to be an oarfish. In our eighth spot today, we have the ETs. Now, there are many theories about the Bermuda Triangle regarding the disappearances of both ships and planes. One of the theories is that aliens are behind this, which seems wild to think about, but a number of aliens or ETs have been spotted 
in the Bermuda Triangle. Christopher Columbus himself spotted an ET when he was traversing the ocean. He apparently wrote about his encounter with a UFO in his diaries. Apparently, Columbus wrote about seeing a bright disc shaped object rise out of the ocean and fly into the sky. He also said he saw stars spinning above them and a candle like light floating up and down around them. So people think that he saw an alien spacecraft and that they're living at the bottom of the ocean. In our seventh spot today, we have the giant squid. In 2005, two Japanese marine biologists discovered a massive giant squid in Japan. The squid was aggressively attacking baited lines in the area. Now they did actually manage to capture footage of it, and researchers were able to identify the creature as being an Archituitis. This is a rare species that can seize bait with extreme force. They're also known as being pretty violent, and this creature was close to 30 feet in length, so it was massive. Now this got scientists thinking, what if there are giant squids of this species residing in the Bermuda Triangle? Since they are violent and known to attack ships, maybe these creatures can be blamed for some of the ship's downfall. I mean, over the years, people have spotted what they believed is the Kraken in the Bermuda Triangle. But what if what they were seeing was really just a massive, aggressive, giant squid? In fact, some squids grow up to 150 feet. Coming in at number six, we have the frilled shark. Now I can't believe that this is an actual creature because it looks like a creature straight out of a horror film. The frilled shark has been around for 80 million years so far. They were given the name the frilled shark because of their frilly appearance of their gills. They also are kind of similar to snakes because they have hinged jaws that allow them to eat big creatures whole. Like when I look at this thing, it looks like a weird mix between a shark and an eel and a snake. It's also got the scariest looking set of teeth. Now these things typically grow to about seven feet. However, in 1880, a captain discovered one that measured to be around 25 feet. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the man of war. Now this is quite an interesting name for a sea creature. In fact, this sea creature is quite interesting. It looks like a jellyfish, but it's not. It's a siphonophore. Now, it gets its name due to its four polyps that it has on its body. One of the polyps, which is a gas-filled bladder, is said to resemble an old warship at full sail. So, yeah, that's why they named it that. Now, these things can grow to about 130 feet, which is longer than a blue whale. However, their bodies are very tiny. They aren't much wider than a broomstick handle. Now, humans have to be careful around these guys because they use their tentacles to sting and paralyze their prey. Some humans have been stung by them and, uh, Apparently, the stings turn into nasty welts and it's incredibly painful. As an adult, chances are that you'll survive this sting. However, sadly, a number of children have died from the venom of the man of war. In our fourth spot, we have the fang tooth fish. Now, this creature gets its name because of its massive fang like teeth. In fact, it has the largest teeth compared to body size of any known fish. So, the fang tooth fish are carnivorous. They love to eat smaller fish and crustaceans, but they have also been known to go after squids. Honestly, they'll just eat anything that they're able to kill. They have massive jaws lined with enormous teeth. In fact, their fangs are so large that they actually evolved to have special sockets on either side of their brain to accommodate their large fangs. Also, they are pretty dark in color, which allows them to blend in perfectly with the deep, dark ocean waters. In our third spot, we have the Mega Mouth Shark. If you're afraid of sharks, then this one is just going to send chills down your spine. Just as its name suggests, these sharks have mega mouths. In fact, they have glowing pores around their mouths so that their mouths actually glow. This helps them in their hunting process. All they gotta do is open their mouth and wait for a fish to be attracted to the light. Now, their mouths are about four feet wide, which is insane. Their bodies are typically around 16 feet in length, but they can grow to be about 20. 
In our second spot, we have the Nudie Brank or Nudie Bronk. I've heard it said both ways, okay? Anyways, these creatures are soft bodied, shellless marine mollusks or sea slugs. They actually can look quite beautiful with their bright, colorful bodies. Now, its name literally means naked gill, hence the whole nudie part. What's interesting about these is that they like to steal the stinging cells from their prey and then they use that on their predators to defend themselves. That's pretty wild, right? And in our number one spot today, we have the Bermuda Beast. Over the years, sailors have spotted a weird creature lurking in the waters of the Bermuda Triangle that is unlike anything that they have ever seen before. Legend goes that the monster is apparently four times the size of the Eiffel Tower. It's also super strong, making it easy to snatch planes in mid-air, and has strong, powerful teeth that can be used to tear apart ships. This creature has been given the name the Bermuda Beast. Bermuda researcher Rob Simone greatly believes there is indeed a creature lurking in the Bermuda waters. He says, and I quote, maybe its food source is contained there. It could explain some of the ships that were mysteriously lost. Now, in the diaries of Christopher Columbus, he wrote about seeing an underwater fire-breathing beast while traveling in the area. Now, I don't know so much about the whole fire-breathing thing, but maybe there is some massive sea beast living in that area. Starting us off at our number 10 spot is one that isn't as weird, but one that is obvious. Film crews. Due to the wild and crazy stories centered around the Bermuda Triangle, many scientists, researchers, ghost hunters, alien hunters, and divers have taken plenty of camera crews out to see men. Many times. Now, due to all of these crazy, amazing stories, I tried to do some research and see if there were any other like missing film crews or anything along those lines, the Bermuda Triangle. But sadly, and probably fortunately, I had no luck whatsoever. Which is very fishy to me. All of these disappearances and strange stories, all of them seem to have no camera or film crew. Sounds like the Bermuda Triangle powers that be are pretty smart and refuse for any of the juicy stuff to be recorded. This is also one of the most popular shipping routes in the world, so it would be great for all of those who frequently sail the triangle to document it. I wonder if anything would actually show up on tape. Hmm? At our number nine spot, we have sea monsters. In part one, remember how I talked about the giant squid that had been caught on camera in the triangle? Well, there have been more reports of sea monsters there over the years, but let me clear up something first. The Webster's Dictionary defines monster as an animal of strange or terrifying shape and one unusually large for its kind. Based off that definition, there are definitely sea monsters swimming below the surface in the Bermuda Triangle. Sadly, none are proven to be ancient dinosaurs or anything like the Loch Ness Monster, but rather are huge marine animals, such as the endangered whale shark which has been known to swim in and around the waters of the Bermuda Triangle. And there is no doubt that if someone first saw this shark, they would scream sea monster. These things are huge and usually reach lengths of 15 to 20 feet. So these may not be the kind of sea monsters you were originally looking for, but I think all those super scary monsters that we're actually looking for live deeper below the surface. And like I said, until we start exploring our own planet, especially our oceans a little bit more, I'm afraid we'll just have to live with the unknown. Coming in at number seven and back to the mysterious kind of things we all love out of the Bermuda Triangle, we have Joshua Slocum. No, I'm not calling this guy weird, I'm saying his disappearance is weird. In 1895, Joshua Slocum became the first man on earth to complete a solo sail around the world. However, on a voyage from Martha's Vineyard to South America, he mysteriously never returned. Slocum was known as quite the experienced sailor and no one knows what happened to him nor his 40 foot long boat. Many theorize that he caught some trouble while sailing in the triangle. Now, there is no proof of any of this and sadly he lived at a time where technology wasn't as high tech either. So this one is a true mystery. This is why kids, if you ever wanna sail around the world or sail period, bring a buddy. If you sail in the Bermuda Triangle, Bring a film crew. Coming in at number five at our halfway point is witchcraft. Yeah, did you know that there are such things as sea witches? <laughs> okay, I'm not actually talking about witches, I'm talking about the yacht that went missing, but for all I know, maybe there actually is such thing as sea witches. Who knows? If they're going to be anywhere, it's probably gonna be the Bermuda Triangle. Right? December 22nd, 1967, a cabin cruiser named Witchcraft, captained by Dan Burak and his friend Father Patrick Horgan, left the shores of Miami to get a better glimpse of the Christmas lights along the shore from out in the ocean. After reaching just one mile from the shore, the Coast Guard received a distress call from Burak, claiming that he had hit something and that they would need to be towed back to shore. In just 19 short minutes, the Coast Guard arrived on scene, but there was nothing to be found. What's even more peculiar is that this yacht was virtually unsinkable and had plenty of emergency equipment
equipment on board. Equipment such as life preservers, lifeboats, flares, distress signals. These cats had all of the good stuff. To the best of the Coast Guard's knowledge, none of these were used and nothing could be found. Searches for Burak and Father Horgan and the boat spread over a 100 mile radius and still nothing was found. Kind of makes you wonder how the yacht got the name Witchcraft, doesn't it? At number four, we have unexpected storms. Reports throughout all of time have come in about the unexpected storms of the Bermuda Triangle. Many of these stories include things such as the electronic fog that I talked about in the first video. As I have said before, storms can come from all directions in this area. They can come from the direction of Mexico, the equator, and from the east side of the Atlantic. And sometimes these storms can even come together all at the same time to make one large mega storm. So that's all I can kind of theorize about there, but as far as these storms being unexpected, Expected. To the best of my knowledge, there is no real explanation. If there's one thing you don't want to mess with, it's mother nature because let me tell you, she can pack a wallop. So whether you believe in the paranormal or mysterious events or not surrounding the triangle, keep your eye on the weather forecast just in case. Starting us off in our top three spot at number three is another famous ship associated with the Bermuda Triangle, the Mary Celeste. The Mary Celeste was discovered December 4th in 1872 in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean with nine barrels of raw alcohol emptied, a sword on the deck, and the lifeboat missing and absolutely no one on board. Captain Benjamin Briggs, his wife and two-year-old daughter, along with the other four members on board, set sail a few days before from New York to go to Genoa, Italy. However, not only were none of them found, none of them turned up in Italy either. I know many of you are probably thinking of a pirate attack, but get this, studies ruled out the possibility of a pirate attack because everything on board appeared to be intact and in good shape, even though the nine barrels were emptied. There are tons of theories on what happened to the crew, everything from underwater earthquakes, which doesn't make sense to me because I don't understand why the boat would still be found, alien abduction, or even an attack by a giant squid. Either way, this is a mystery that I don't think we will ever get solved and we will just have to live with that. At our number two spot, we have fire falling from the sky. Way, 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 way back in time, the infamous Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle and came out with quite the tale. He reported seeing a giant ball of fire falling from the sky and then landing in the ocean. A few weeks later in the distance, he could see a strange light in and around the landing area of the fireball. He also wrote about the erratic compass movements he experienced at the time. Probably not aware yet that his compass was pointing to true north and not magnetic north. Once again, I think I expect aliens. Too many UFOs have been spotted around that area. And let's face it folks, I think it's aliens. They have been here for a long time and that sounds a lot like a UFO sighting. Either that or Columbus was absolutely tanked because I know everyone at that time was very fond of their alcoholic drinks. But aliens is the much more fun and oddly enough mature theory. So I'm gonna stick to that one. And finally coming in at our number one is the lost city of Atlantis. This one is very loose but many people theorize that the Bermuda Triangle is home to the lost city of Atlantis. According to the legend and speculation of this mythical city, Atlantis relied on the power of these special energy crystals. The theory is that these crystals are still underwater beneath the triangle and are so strong that they are messing up navigation for all of those who dare fly or sail above. Now, <laughs> there is absolutely no proof to any of this, but this is a wicked cool theory, and if Atlantis or Atlantean people actually do exist, where else better than one of the deepest spots on Earth, and also most mysterious spots on Earth? Hmm? 